I've covered quite a few interesting pieces of hardware on this channel in the past, from the Newton to the Playbook to everyone's favorite, the TC-1100, and even my larger machines have made at least short appearances in my videos. Today though, I have something special, something I've never shown on this channel before and I can practically guarantee you've never seen anywhere on YouTube. An incredibly small number of these things were made and I'm lucky enough to own one. So without further ado, may I introduce you to the Propintosh. So, uh, yeah, about the number of units that were produced, it is pretty small. There's only one of these computers in existence. Documentation online is pretty sparse, but don't worry, I know this thing like the back of my hand. Why? Because I built it. Yeah, I figure that's enough clickbait. I'm not actually showing some commercially available product or anything, it's just a project of mine. Actually, it's a pretty old project of mine. What you're looking at is a completely custom-built computer that I designed back in my freshman year of high school. At the time, I did a lot of programming work on the Propeller microcontroller. You can even see the board here in one of my earlier videos. I really liked the platform for how cheap and easy to use it was, but it had two problems. One, by the time you had any reasonably complicated arrangement of peripherals, the board was in the middle of a cable mess. And two, the limited memory of the chip meant that I couldn't do things like run graphics on the TV the same time I was using the keyboard and mouse. The Propintosh was built out of necessity to solve these issues. The idea was to stuff all the important components I wanted to use with the propeller into one tiny box with its own power supply, ports on the back, and a built-in smart LCD, which used a lot less memory compared to TV graphics. You can even see here a few designs I laid out just to try and fit all the components together. Now, while not all of these planned features made the cut, the microSD slot under the screen for instance, the computer does have plenty of capabilities that made it useful for me to program on. Along the back, there's ports for power, a PS2 mouse and keyboard, an easily accessible mini USB for loading programs, and a VGA port that was never connected to anything. Along the front, the computer sports a 160x128 monochrome LCD display. The only colors it can show are blue and white, which led me to nicknaming the thing the blue box for a short time, though that name was already taken. I settled on Propintosh instead, since the vertical design reminded me of the original Macintosh. You can crack the thing open with a Phillips head screwdriver to reveal a pretty simple board. Well, on the top side anyways. At the time I didn't have access to any materials for etching, so the bottom of the board is just a little hard to look at. The thing ran on a wall wart power supply or the five internal D cells, which had the added bonus of weighing down the bottom, making it nearly impossible to knock over. Spec-wise, the computer is a bit of an oddball. The P8X32A propeller chip that powers the thing has eight 32-bit processors, each rating at 80 MHz each, but at 32 kilobytes, it has so little memory, the Apple II I own can put it to shame. Now granted, part of that is because I'm using a microcontroller as a computer, which isn't really its intended purpose, but that limitation is what caused me to choose a smart LCD screen. The monochrome display on the front actually has its own processor and memory designed specifically for graphics. All the main processor has to do is send a command like, draw a line from this point to this point, or erase this block of pixels, and the screen will take care of the rest. Functionally, this was great, since it meant I could run graphics alongside complex programs on the propeller's limited memory, but in terms of frame rate, it was terrible. Even though I could send more complicated shapes to the graphics coprocessor, it couldn't draw them nearly as quickly as the propeller could have. You can see it here just barely pulling off a responsive mouse cursor. The more things that were on the screen, the worse the frame rate got. Here's the first demo I wrote for the thing, which is nearly unusable. I got around the frame rate issue by only redrawing the parts of the screen that changed rather than everything at once. And using that, I wrote a bigger, better demo. This demo was pushing it in terms of how much memory it used, but I managed to pack in three pretty neat programs to really show off what I could do with this thing. The first program was a game of Moncala, complete with sounds, even if the computer never did get a speaker, a GUI interface, and an AI opponent. The second was a calculator that could graph in 2D and 3D, to show off the fact that I was able to cram a full floating point math library into the computer with graphics at the same time, something I could never do with a traditional TV out. The third program was pretty simple, but it showed off the speed that the computer could run at with properly optimized code. It had a little ball that you could gravitationally attract to your mouse cursor, based entirely on the slower floating point math I used in the graphing calculator. 
It took a few days to write the demo program, and overall, even if it was just to show off to a few of my friends, I was really pleased with the results. The other big program I wrote for the Propintosh was an interpreter that lets you program in BASIC right on the device without having to be plugged into a computer, just like on an Apple II. This was nothing new for the propeller by the time I had written it, but what made mine special was that, thanks to the memory the display freed up, I could use floating point math rather than just integers. In other words, while the other interpreters could only do simple operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division on integers, mine could do all of those in more advanced functions like signs and square roots with decimal numbers. My interpreter could also do graphics and interface with a text-to-speech chip, which I never did get around to installing. I am Propintosh. Altogether, the basic interpreter was a lot of fun to write and to use. I even started work on a second version intended to be faster and with more features, like support for different data types, but it never did come into being and probably never will. See, for whatever reason, years ago when I wrote this program, I decided it would be a good idea to document as little of this code as possible, aka no comments and single letter variable names, which means that, looking at it today, I have 14 pages of code and almost no idea what any of these sections do. In fact, the whole reason I even wrote the second version from the ground up was because this is what happened with the first version. And yet somehow, I hadn't learned my lesson. The two demos in the basic interpreter were the only major programs I ever wrote for this computer. Sure, I made a few test programs just to see what the graphics looked like, and I was even working on a graphical programming tool inspired by LabVIEW, but that never really went anywhere. All in all, though, despite my best efforts, the computer was just too limited. It could do basic graphics, run some complex programs, but with the frame rate issues and tiny amount of memory in the propeller chip, I found myself outgrowing the Propintosh pretty quickly. And that's a shame. I put a lot of time into designing this computer to be just what I wanted, only to ultimately discover that I was better off with something cheaper and more powerful like the Raspberry Pi. Even if the Propintosh is joining the ranks of flop tech products I review on my channel, I had a lot of fun building it, watching the pieces come together as it evolved from a board with a bunch of cables, to a cluttered breadboard on my table, to a little black box with a few plugs on the back. I remember being so excited seeing the programs I wrote come to life on the screen and recording them on my crappy phone camera to show to my friends. I even learned a few valuable lessons while working on the Propintosh, like the difference that simple and efficient code can make. The most useful lesson though is one that I've learned recently while looking back over this project. Always, always, always comment your code.